Good afternoon. This is the hearing of the Municipal Officer Electoral Board for the Village of Midlothian set for January 3rd, 2017. The time is now 2.33 p.m. and we are meeting in the Village of Midlothian Boardroom. I am Mayor Sharon Ryback, by law, the Chairman of the Electoral Board. This board was called, has been called into session pursuant to my call after objections were filed regarding nominating papers for a candidate for the Office of the Village Clerk for the April 4, 2017 consolidated election. By law, the board consists of myself as Chairman, Village Trustee Karen Kreiss, and public member Tom P. Quinn, who was appointed to serve on the Electoral Board by the Circuit Court of Cook County Special Order 2016-83. The village clerk is unable to serve on the Electoral Board as the objections concerning his nomination papers, and the village trustee with the second longest term of service is also unavailable to serve as he is a candidate for the Office of Village Clerk. I will call the roll call of members so the record will reflect their presence. Member Kreis? Here. Member Quinn? Here. Chairman Ryback is present. All members of the Electoral Board are present. Also serving as attorneys for the Electoral Board are Dave Freeman and Neil Smith of the law firm of Robin Schwartz, Nicholas Lifton, and Taylor. There are two cases on this board's docket. The board is going to do roll call for attendance for the first case. The first case is number 2017-3, Kathleen Johnson versus Michael Colstead. Is there anyone present on behalf of the objector? I am. I'm Kathleen Johnson. Is there anyone present on behalf of the candidate? Mike Holstead, I'm here. I ask both of you to complete the appearance form and return them to the board at this time. Thank you. We will call your case again in a few moments. The board is now going to do a roll call for the attendance for the next case. The next case is case number 2017-4. Nora Grutius versus Michael Colstead. Is there anyone present on behalf of the, of the objector? I am Nora Grutius. Is there anyone present on behalf of the candidate? Mike Colstead, I'm here. I ask both of you to complete the appearance form and return them to the board at this time. Thank you, we will call your case in again in a few minutes. Like we said, if you could just fill out those forms and turn them in before you leave this afternoon, that would be great. The first order of business is the adoption of rules for the electoral board. These rules have been prepared by our attorneys and we understand they are based on the standard rules used by the electoral boards across the state, including the State Board of Elections, the Cook County Officers Electoral Board, and the Chicago Board of Election Commissions. Copies of the proposed rules have been available on the table since 1.40 p.m. today. Does anyone have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding the rules? And again, copies of the rules are on the table there. And I've also got some extras when we run out, if anybody needs a cut. Can I ask a question, just so, I know they were made available at 1.40 this afternoon when we were served with our summons to come here. It would have been helpful to receive these rules a little bit earlier so that we could really understand <coughs> and really participate in this. I, I feel like we're at a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of being able to interact with you appropriately. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we could take a, a, a break if, if you'd like to... No, I, I've, I've had a chance to read, but i just thinking that if, in future cases, this might be helpful if whoever's objecting, if they receive that ahead of time. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the rules? I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, Member Kreiss? Aye. <coughs> Member Quinn? Aye. Chairman Rybiak? Aye. The rules are unanimously adopted. The electoral board's attorney will maintain the official record of the board's proceedings and any pleadings, motions, and similar documents to be served on the village at its village hall address during regular office or during the board's hearings. Copies of any documents filed must also be faxed or emailed to the electoral board's attorney. The rules of the electoral board will now be entered into the board's record for the case. The electoral board has its own, at, at its own expense, provided for the services of a certified court reporter to record these proceedings. The board will continue this practice during the board's hearings. The board will not plan, does not plan to have the transcripts be prepared unless the board needs the transcripts for a particular purpose. Should a party be dissatisfied with the board's decision, a complete record will be furnished to the circuit court at the board's expense, but subject to such limitations as may be provided by law. 
any person is, of course, welcome to purchase the transcript from the court reporter herself if needed. The assistance of the Village of Midlothian staff may be utilized to assist with the keeping of the minutes of the Electoral Board's meetings and with exhibits. I will now note the following documents for the record which will be entered into the official record of the case as exhibits. The call of the meeting, returns of service of call on Chairman Christ, or Chairman Ryback, the returns of service of call on Member Christ, the returns of service call on Member Quinn and Circuit Court of Cook County Special Order 2016-83, returns of call, returns of service of call on the objector, returns of service of call on the candidate. Are there any questions regarding these documents? If not, they will be entered into the record as board exhibits. Without objections, any returns of service which arrive at a later date will be entered into the records automatically. The board will all also enter into the record of the case the original objections and the original nomination papers as exhibits. Now the board will consider the first matter, case 2017-3. Okay, case 2017-3, Kathleen Johnson versus Mike Falstead. Um, well, that's the objector. Are we looking at um, signature Cook County records checks? Yes, we are in terms for signatures that are invalid, non-residents, um, and in total, because of the number of objections that we have seen, takes the candidate below 91. So I am wondering, from what we've discussed a little bit earlier, do we have to go through the same process to show that the, the signatures that we see as invalid have to be checked together in order to, to decide if the 113 signatures are in fact valid? Yeah, I, I think I hear what you're saying is that we, this is a records check where we, the issue whether your objections are valid or invalid is something that must be resolved by looking at the records of Cook County, is that what you're saying? Correct, because again, I went down to the board and went through all the signatures. All right, now, now I'll turn to the candidate, uh, Mr. Colstead. Uh, do you have any uh, to say at this point? I think. It, Cook County records check issue meeting, uh, and you heard last time, uh, I won't go through it again, but uh, basically we have, you have, you're entitled to have, and the objector is entitled to have a representative and an attorney present at a records check where the Cook County clerk staff member is, is looking through the records. Uh, if you, and she's making an initial determination about whether she agrees with the objection or whether she doesn't agree with the objection. <coughs> Uh, at that time, you either uh, know that you're in agreement with her or disagree with her, you object, and then the matter comes back uh, to this board. Uh, if you follow the procedures and the rules, it comes back to this board for a final hearing. And uh, is are there any questions from the candidate or objector at this point? No, I have no questions at this point. And again, I said, you know, we, you know, we talked about a day uh, January 23rd, and I would suggest uh, to all involved that um, we come back on that day. And I guess, Mr. Flynn, you're the one <laughs> that we well, didn't consult with last time. Yeah, I have time. a little concern. I mean, that it's sort of late, isn't it? Pardon? Uh, conduct the records exam. You think it's going to take that long? Well, I, uh, you know, we talked about coming back as early as, as uh, January 17th, and. Uh, Unfortunately, that didn't work with uh, everybody's schedule. With, with the uh, with the 23rd date, with that, that would be a, a, the Rule 8 hearing also? I mean, yeah, we would come back for a hearing on, on all issues then on the 23rd. Um, and the, uh, the Rule 8 hearing would, uh, would happen on the 23rd and get notice of those. Uh, and the ballot needs to be certified by January 26th. So we still have I mean, still a few days. Uh, yeah. You know, if I can, and I know nobody wants to prolong this, and I know we already set the date, but I can, if I have to, I will have to. If you thought, if you think it would work better, 
on January 17th, I will cancel that meeting and reschedule the Veterans Committee meeting. Well, uh, yeah, if I can make a comment before you start rescheduling. Yeah. You're making an assumption that these hearings are going to be very quick. You already have a hearing scheduled for the 23rd at 7 o'clock. That hearing could go for an hour or two. Do you really want to start a second hearing potentially at 9 o'clock that night? Yeah. So it may be that all the electoral boards want to consider having a separate night to consider each of these objections. Yeah. Either that or starting them early in the day, perhaps 5 o'clock if no one's available during the day, perhaps starting at 5 o'clock rather than 7 o'clock. I think you're going to run into a problem either with these hearings or the hearings with the other boards if you try to jam them all into one evening. Either that or you're going to be here for midnight. Yeah. So if uh, if you're representing, if, if the 17th works, then I would put that out there as a date for this electoral work. I will have to, I can, I will cancel that meeting and schedule it for a date when this electoral board is not convened. Okay. I can't, I cannot do this. Well, could we do the the, the prior? Um, could we do the Ryback on the seventeenth? Because um, Mr. Quinn doesn't isn't on that board. Um, okay. Everybody's still in this room. It was on the earlier ones. Is the seventeenth a date that's available? Yes. We're good. Alan, okay, Alan, okay. All right, so then what we'll do is matter 2017 and 2017-1 and 2, the objections to the nominating papers of the village president will hear on <coughs> January 17th at 7 p.m. And then is that move like you had given them till the tenth to file the briefings, but gave me till the seventeenth to respond right. to the briefings. Yeah, so we'll change we'll have to change up the briefing schedule. We can get you all our materials by either Thursday the 5th or Friday, January 6th, to allow Mrs. Ravick enough time to respond. Okay. That would be helpful. Okay. All right, so the briefing schedule will be this. Objectors to January 6th. To submit any uh, briefs or arguments in writing. And then Sharon, you'll have to the uh, 12th. Okay. And then we'll have a hearing. Again, January 17th, 7 p.m. for the docket numbers 2017-1 and 2017-2. Okay. Now, back to 2017-3. <clears throat> and we're talking about... That the 23rd. That having that today on the 23rd. And that, Mr. Quinn, that doesn't work for you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. At 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. And again, to ask a clarifying question for the 23rd, when would you like the documents sent electronically into the village hall for that objection? 
Are, are you asking when, or if that's how the form would like to have it submitted? I didn't hear the question. So I so we have similar documents to submit for each of the objections. So we're submitting by the six for Mr. Ryback for Mr. Colstead. When even though his meeting's on the twenty third, when would you like to receive the documents? Well, since we have uh, since we have additional time, why don't we go with the uh, the briefing schedule that we originally talked about? That being briefs due on the tenth. And <coughs> Colstead's response briefs being due on the seventeenth. whatever kind of briefs or written arguments they want to make in support of their position. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Uh, and now, um, objection 2017-4. Mm -hmm. um, and I would suggest to be in the same night and having the same briefing schedule for that, given the nature of the objections and the part parties involved. Okay, so everybody's in agreement with that? Uh, okay. All right. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'll ask the objectors if you have anything else to add, any other questions or concerns? No, at this time. Okay. Not at this time. And then the candidate, uh, Mr. Colstead, do you have any, any questions no, or concerns no, no, no. at this time? Right now. All right. All right. So this will be a Rule 8 hearing, too. They Correct. Have, they have to uh, have their witnesses ready and their affidavits if need be? Yeah, that's correct. And then would, the reference there is, is that the Rule 8 hearing is the, is the term referring to the rule, and the rules we just adopted is Rule 8. And so it's the last, when we come back here on January 23rd, it's the last hearing. So in other words, if you've got any proof to make, you've got to bring in your witnesses. If you've got witnesses that you want to testify, if you've got affidavits or exhibits or evidence that you want to submit at that time, that's the date to do it. That's what we're going to have, like trials, like a hearing. An evidentiary fact hearing, in addition to legal arguments that you may that you may make on that day, it's going to be all heard on that day. That's, I mean, that's what's anticipated. I mean, we don't anticipate having another date after that. Can I ask a point of clarification? Uh, will the burden be on the uh, party that loses the records exam? Yeah, the the, the party who the records or the records exam. Uh, the, the clerk is, like I said before, the clerk is going to make making initial rulings on the records. So that she may or may not agree that an objection is valid. The person who disagrees with that has to provide notice to the electoral board, copying the attorney, that you want to go forward with the hearing on that objection. So if you don't provide us that notice, then it's waived. That's not an issue that goes forward at the hearing on the 23rd. So in other words, if the clerk makes an initial ruling on page 2, line 10, and you disagree with that, you've got to provide written notice to the electoral board, whether it's the candidate or the objector has to provide written notice to the electoral board that you want to go forward and contest that ruling made by the clerk. And again, my, my question is if there are uh, issues that are going to be contested, how far in advance do we need to give you and the candidates notice before the hearing on the 17th and the 23rd? The, the rules the rules we adopted provide a time frame of 24 hours. So in other words, you're down there at the clerk's office. She's The clerk is conducting a records check. At the conclusion of that records check, you have 24 hours to provide written notice to the electoral board of the 
the issues you want to go forward with. From so there. you say the electoral board, the electoral board of Midlothian, or the county downtown that we're objecting to the way in which the the signatures were either sustained or rejected. The the elect this is the electoral board up here. Cook County clerk is a Cook County clerk. She the the clerk staff member is going to be making rulings on on objections. Initial rulings, and I say initial because this board makes the final decision. So if you don't agree with something that she makes at that, a decision she makes at that records check, if the candidate doesn't agree with it, if the objector doesn't agree with it, then you've got to provide the electoral board written notice within 24 hours of the issues you want to go for, what you, of what you disagree with, the decisions that the clerk, the clerk made that you disagree with. And is that objection in the form of a brief? Is it a statement? Is it a document that we're provided so that we can write out which signatures we're objecting to that were disagreed with? Yeah, the, the rule the rules stated specifically, but basically it's 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 got to be in writing. It's got to be enough detail that we know what you're okay. wanting to go forward with. I think that they normally entitle it a motion uh, for a rule eight hearing. And well, that's and that's that's the twenty four hour uh, notice that I was describing. Is that, is that your understanding? That, that that's they have to give us twenty four hours. You have to give us twenty four hours notice, and that is called in our rules a motion for a rule eight hearing. And that's the motion for a rule eight hearing. Is that your, Mr. Quinn, is that yes? Did, did I describe that? So that 24-hour notice you're giving is is in is, is called a a motion for a ruling. Okay. So there were uh, any questions? Any, any other questions? Uh, you know what Any other questions from the objectors? No. I, I guess I have a uh, just a procedure. Do we get a we'll get a copy of the of the uh, records examination? Correct. Correct. We'll get a copy. Yeah. The, the clerk, um, you know, the clerk is making these decisions, but uh, they generate a printout that's it's got like uh, you know they can't they can't send their original election records to to us. Uh, so what they'll do is they'll generate a, uh, a copy that's got a picture of the signature. To the I mean, it's, it's a, it, the signature is a relevant objection. They'll, they'll have a copy of it, a photocopy copy of the signature, and uh, it, it'll also have the, you know the, the records check information like address. Address is an issue, and then it'll have uh, it'll tell this board. What decision the clerk made? Like, if the clerk decided to uphold the objection, it'll note that. If the, if the clerk decided to, or if the Cook County clerk decided to uh, uh, overrule the objection, it'll note that, and we'll get a copy of that. We'll like to report. And, uh, and and by the way, how far in advance? I'll have to check with the with the clerk. As far as it may, it may be that they generate uh, something right there uh, on the spot, right after the election, uh, right after the records check, in which case we'll get a copy pretty promptly. I'll get a copy pretty promptly, and then it'll be distributed uh, to the electoral board promptly. Is there any other questions I can address? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Um, Member Kreis? Aye. Member Quinn? Aye. Uh, Chairman Rydak? Aye. We are adjourned.